All right, so today, today I'm going to do a uh, brief lecture just about how we can uh, create some moldings for the rooms. If you want to create moldings, uh, that will kind of go in with the doorway type stuff and then a little bit more of the modeling on there. So I'm going to build one of these doorways, make a door that will actually open and close. So I'm going to start off building a cube, putting it in place, scaling it up. Oops, too small. Uh, door heights are typically 204 centimeters. So I'm going to go in there and put in 204 centimeters in the Y. Uh, remember, my world is a little bit uh, different size, so I actually need to multiply that times 204 times 1.5, 306. So that's how tall my door should be. Okay, I'm also going to put my pivot at the bottom and snap it to the bottom of this. So that's how big the door should be. As far as the width goes, I'm going to try to fit this pretty close to what my walls are. I'm going to turn my grid off too. I don't need that. Make this wider. Uh, typically, doors are about 36 inches. So, again, 36 times 2.54, 91.44. And then, because everything is one and a half times bigger, 137.16, which that's pretty close. 137.16. There's a lot of math, but you can use Google for a lot of it. Uh, and I could have estimated. I could have just gotten it that big, but uh, I want to make sure it's obviously, it looks right. If the door went all the way to the ceiling, that would look odd to have this huge door in there that swings open, right? So if you look at these, the door is there and the rest of it is ceiling, okay? So uh, I'm going to bridge between these two walls here. So I'm going to go and insert an edge loop. Oops. Or, let me find my door. On. There's my door right there. I'm going to go multi cut and multi cut across this whole thing. Grab all the points and then scooch it up. Okay, now this is probably the side of this. This is probably the side of that. So roughly there seems like even spacing. Cool. So now I can just take these two pieces and bridge between them. And bridge between them. There we go. <laughs> and so it works. All right. So now we've bridged it. So now we have that area up there. Um, so the door will sit nicely inside that area. Uh, I'm going to go and create. Uh, do this a couple different ways. I think it's best maybe if I just use this. So I'm just going to duplicate this shape and pull it off. That'll be my door. I'll get to that in a second. And then this will be the frame. So I'm just going to delete the faces here. And then I can use this as my extrusion that I could then pull out or change the thickness. Sometimes the extrusion will give you, um, if you look at the corners, like down here it's really thick, then up there it's really thin. It's not going to matter too much because I'm going to adjust it anyway, but thickness will give me an even uh, movement outside of it. All right, so that's good. All right, so now I'm just going to go into my vertices and I'm just going to um, snap everything so that it's lined up perfectly. So I'm going to snap this way and that way. Same thing here, I'm going to snap downward and over. I'll grab these, snap that way and this way. And then I also want to bring this so that all of these faces snap to the front. And then all of these faces snap to the back. Okay. So now that fits perfectly where that door is. Now if I needed to, 
uh, that's the exact width. So I couldn't just grab this and move it because that'll screw up the width of my door. So if, let's say, I was really far off, it looks like this, I would just make sure I grab all three faces, scoot it over until it's, again, roughly where it needs to be. Cool. All right. So now I can go into my edge loop, add some edge loops to this, <clears throat> and then do a couple extrusions here just to make it look a bit fancier. So I'm going to do it on both sides, extrude, pull it out. And that's pretty much as detailed as I need to go for the door, just so it kind of covers up where the corners are so it doesn't look like there's any like weird openings there. Um, so that should work. I'm going to isolate it for a second. This here is never going to be seen. Sorry, the inside will. Just delete that. Uh, but the outside will never be seen. My walls should cover that. Same thing with the bottom stuff. All that bottom stuff won't be seen. So I'm just going to delete all those extra faces. Okay. Um, even the faces on top here, um, if they were covered inside the wall, I would delete them. Those ones aren't. Those are on the outside. Okay, cool. I'll double check my door to make sure it fits. So I'll put the pivot for the door at the bottom left. There it is. Oops, it's not there. There it is. And I'll snap it into position. And now that fits pretty good. Okay, it could be slightly smaller, just like a hair smaller, but not any more than that. Otherwise, we'll get actual like holes poking through. Okay, that'll work. Cool. Um, Maybe I'll move it forward a little bit more. Yep, that works. Um, other stuff that I may want to do, I may want hinges on here. I may want a door handle. All that stuff I could model and include um, inside here. So if I'm doing a door handle, just like everything else, I keep it as simple as possible. I really need to make that bigger so I can see stuff. There we go. Roughly where the door handle is. If I had measuring tools, I could measure it. Insert an edge loop here. Scale that down. I could delete that face because I don't need it. And I'll probably go through and smooth this out just uh, one time. There we go. So that's a pretty sufficient door handle. This one should probably be scooted in some. There's a mushroom. Now, these are not the door handles they have here, right? Because these ones have the latch on the side, which, again, I could just do that. And now I have that door handle, OK? Uh, or I could extrude it and scale it. And then I would have sort of kind of that door handle. I guess straight is the way to go with that one. Okay. Um, you'll see how we get facets. So if I go to my mesh display and I say soften, right there, now we don't have the facets. Now it looks like it's nice and soft. Cool. Uh, door handle's there. Door's there. If I put hinges on there, I put hinges on there too. Um, Yep, that's it. All right. Uh, just for the time being, I'm going to put hinges on here just so you can see what it would look like. Um, oops. So I'm going to slide it over. I'm going to scale it up. Keep in mind the direction that a door would open because obviously that would tell you where the hinges are going to be at. So I'm using, uh, these are obviously huge hinges. Let's make it smaller. So let's go over here, there. That should be a sufficient size. Um, I'm going to isolate this so I can make some other stuff around it. So I'm going to need a cylinder. I'm going to lower my divisions on this. Again, keeping everything light, as, as light as you can get it. No caps on it. There we go. Now I'm going 
Now, just to see the placement of this, that's not going to work, right? Because it's inside the door. So one of these sides of the door needs to be flush with the other side so that it fits correctly. So let's make this flush with that corner so that this can be flush with that. And then this can be flush with that. If it's hard to see, you can turn this on, which is your wireframe on shaded. So now I can see where the lines are and kind of line that up a bit better. All right, that's good. All right, so now I'm gonna just take this and maybe flatten it out a little bit more. Put the pivot over here, duplicate it, rotate it. Be like that it'll be intersecting but again no one's going to see it because it's going to be so close to it so we shouldn't have an issue with that there we go okay uh, more stuff i can delete the face on the inside here the face on the inside there oops not there there other side Uh, duplicate it, scoot it down. Okay, so I'm gonna skip the UV part for this, but I would definitely lay out the UVs for it, okay? So just for now, imagine that that is our door all finished. <clears throat> Depending on the animation that we do for this, we may have different pieces set up. So if I wanted the door handle to be able to rotate as the door opens, that piece would be exported out separately. If I wanted um, the door with the hinges and all that, obviously I want this to open, that would be exported separately. If you've played video games before, sometimes there's doors that open, sometimes there's doors that don't open. So if it's a door that doesn't open, I don't need the hinges. If there's a door that does open like this one, I probably want those hinges on there so that from this side I can see that there's hinges. All right, so uh, everything is cool here. I'm just gonna take everything and group it. I'm gonna put the pivot in the corner. I'm gonna adjust it in a second. I just need it in the corner for now because imagine I've already laid out the UVs. Um, I always like to keep a copy like here in the world. And then I also like to duplicate it and bring it back to the origin because that's the one that actually gets exported. So if I need to make adjustments, I have one that's already in place and then I can always come back, come back to it. So I'm gonna go to my grid. I'm gonna find out where the grid is right there, yes. I'm gonna hold down X and middle mouse button drag. There is my door right on the grid. And then I'm gonna freeze my transforms for all the stuff. Freeze my transforms, okay. And then also for my group, I'm gonna freeze the transforms. All right, now, uh, typically I would lay out good UVs. For this, I'm just gonna automatic, so I have something there. And now I have to set up my pivots for this. So my door's pivot should be in that corner, okay? So wherever this is gonna rotate from, that's where this is going to be set up, all right? Now it should uh, line up with, or it should have these all together. So these three pieces, the door and these two pieces um, should be all in one. I'll also include maybe the handle in here. Well, I'll do the handle separately, that way you can see that too, I guess. All right, so I'm just gonna combine these I'm going to go to my top view, hit F, find out where the pivot for this is. There it is. And the pivot for this should be pretty much centered um, in the middle of this thing, like right in the center of that uh, gear or the hinge. Then I can test it out. Looks like it fits. Okay. So that's one object. Then I have the door frame, the hinge, the hinge and the plates on the inside. So those will be combined also. The pivot for this I'll keep in the bottom corner. And then I have the door handle. It's gonna be by itself, but its pivot should be in the center of this. 
So that looks like that's how that would rotate. If I'm off, it will be should be somewhat obvious, right? Like that's way too far off. Oops. There we go. Cool. All right, so now I have my objects here. So I'm going to make sure that this is out of the group, so it's by itself. This is my door. This is the door frame. And that's my handle. So I'll export these out as FBX and then bring them into the game. Yes, import, import all. And then if I go into my meshes, oops, geometry, structure, models, door parts, door parts, door parts. Okay, so each one of these parts are separated, just like I showed before, if I wanted these things to be all in the same item. Do I have my hinges on here? Let me go to uh, wireframe. Yep, so the hinge is there, you can see it. Um, I'm gonna make a blueprint, and this is gonna be an actor, and I'm gonna call this BP underscore door. I'm gonna go inside it. <clears throat> now by default, you get this uh, circle right here. I'm just gonna make a scene node. So I go up here to node, and then or add component, and say scene. I'm gonna call this root, and then just drop this on here, and that makes that go away. Okay, and that way when I drop in the scene, it doesn't have this like sphere kind of sitting around. Now I'm going to bring in all the other items that I have: door handle, door frame, and door. So I'm going to call this a static. Oops. Uh, I can go to static mesh here, and then go find it. Come on. Here's door parts door. And you'll see that it drops it in, and it puts the pivot still in the same spot. So I'll add another static mesh, and let me start naming these, door frame, door frame. Okay, I'll drag this to the root and say attach, that way it's just out there, and then another static mesh, handle, and handle. Okay. Now notice that the handle came in and its pivot is way up here, right? Um, I need to get the pivot in the same spot. Oops. Okay, uh, there's nothing I can really do inside here to move the pivot around, it's like stuck right there. So I'm going to uh, close this. I'm gonna go into my door handle. I'm gonna say show pivot. There's the pivot way down there and then I can hold control and I can drag it up, okay? Now the reason it's doing this is because, it is control, come on. Where is these? Oh no, it's not in there. Uh, that would be out here I could hold control. I have to go back to Maya and then move it to the origin, okay? So it doesn't like being way over here because it puts the pivot back there at the origin. So I'm going to go to my um, view just snap this down here. Come on. There we go. So now its pivot is right there. I'm going to freeze the transforms and then export that out again. Oops. Game exporter. Yes, yes. Okay, so now I'll go back into my blueprint, back to my viewport, change this handle to my other handle. Okay, now it puts it down there, that's not a big deal because I can just move it over. Okay, and now the pivot's in the right spot so that now as I rotate it, it'll rotate correctly move it over just a notch. Now notice I also didn't bring in the one for the other side of the door. If I have one handle, I can just use one handle for both sides. I don't need to uh, 
make two handles and bring both in. All right, so now we have static mesh, which is here, uh, which is our door. Let's call this door. Let's check the rotation on it, make sure it rotates correctly. It looks like it's rotating a bit off, right? Let's go back and double check our pivot. I thought I had it in the right spot, but maybe not. Nope, it's way off. All right, so let's put the pivot for this uh, door. And I'm just moving it back over there. And then I will freeze my transforms and then re-export that out again. Yes, import. Yes, import. Grab the door. I go to door parts. I grab the door again. Okay, so now I can adjust it, put it in position. I can tweak it later if I need to. All right, so now it's in the right spot. So now it should rotate perfectly. Now to get the handle to rotate with it, I just take the handle, drop it into the door. And that way when I grab the door and rotate, it should take the handle with it. If I need a handle on the other side, I can just duplicate this. Come on, hold control, or uh, alt, nope, hold control. All right. Duplicate. And then I can move it here and then rotate it. There. All right, so now I have two handles. All right, so now I'm ready to actually animate this. Um, so I'm going to go to save. And I'm going to go to create another item. And this is going to be a collision event. So in this case, what's going to happen is someone's going to get closer to the door. As they get closer to the door, the door will automatically open. Okay. There's other ways to do it with a key press. That's a little bit more complicated. So I'm just going to go with this one, which is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to make a sphere. Oops. Oh my gosh, I just want to type. So now I'm going to take this sphere and make it huge, or I'm going to try to. There it goes. And this is where you can set that range for as someone comes closer to your door, at what point do you want it to open? Okay. Now, if I only want them to open it from one way, like let's say it's one of those things where once they walk through the door, they can't get back out of it, I could actually put it like right here. That way... They walk up to the door, the door opens, but then once they get through, the door's closed, they can't get back around the other side. Um, in this case, it's just going to be like this. Okay, So that way, either side, they could open the door. So now I'm going to go to the event graph, and this is where all of that setup is going to happen. So we have to tell uh, Unreal, when the person gets into this collision sphere, I want you to play an animation of the door opening up. Okay, and then once that happens, then the door will open. And then when they uh, get out of the circle, then the door closes. Okay, so I'm going to right click on that, say add event, and then all of these are different things that you could do. So I could say um, on clicking, so when someone clicks like the mouse or a key or whatever, that's when this happens. But in this case, we're just going to use on component begin overlap. Okay, which means when the character, the, the guy, walks on top of it, what's going to happen? Um, these look confusing, but if you're kind of comfortable or getting comfortable with nodes, it's a bit less confusing. Um, this is the pathway. So this is like when they overlap, this is what's going to happen. So it's going to go from this node, and then it's going to go into another node, then it's going to go into another node. So basically what I want to do is say, okay, when you overlap, I want to um, rotate the door. So I have to go here, and I'm going to do add timeline. 
Okay. Now this is a timeline just like an animation class. So I double click it and it brings this up. Now this is kind of like a weird way to do it, but it's how it works. I'm going to add a float value and I'm going to call this open door. And I'm going to right click and add a point. So this is just like animation where we're adding the points individually though and not, um, and not just like keyframing it. So here's one point. I'm going to set the value at zero and the time at zero. Okay, so when the animation starts, the door will be at zero, no rotation. Um, this one is what's going to happen as the door rotates. So how long will the door take to open? Right now it's set to 1.8 seconds. Let's set it to one second. And then how far should the door open when it rotates? Probably like 90 degrees. Okay. So now there's our curve. If we needed to, we could adjust it just like we could inside of Maya. There's um, ways that you can control the uh, blending of it, the smoothness. It's fine for now. So I'm just going to leave it. I'll say save. Back to my event graph. Okay. So now basically I have this thing that says when the um, guy walks on top of that sphere, play the timeline. Now nothing is connected to the timeline. It's basically just an animation. So I have to tell it, okay, what do I want to animate? Well, I want to animate the door. So I'm going to drag the door down here. And then I'm going to click and drag and then say set rotation. And if I say set world rotation right there. All right. So this is basically going to say, okay, I'm going to set the rotation of that door. What am I going to set it to? Um, I'm going to set it to whatever this new value is. And that new value is going to come from here. So I have to convert this into something that this can read. Right now it can't read it because it doesn't know, like, what is that? Uh, rotation. So I'm going to do a make rotator. And you'll see the colors here coincide. So this one is green. This is one value. This is 0 to 90. This is three values, x, y, and z. So that's why we can't take one and just drop it in the other because it doesn't know how to convert it. So we're going to take this, and I believe it's the y. We'll find out. And then I'm going to drag this to there. Okay. So now what should happen is the guy walks over the door, and this animation is going to play. Um, I have to tell it to actually do that, so we'll drag this to update. And then let's see, compile, save, close. Uh, I'm going to delete this one. That was my test one. And I'm going to drop in my new door. And then now we go here. I say play. And then we get closer to the door. <laughs> that was the wrong way. <laughs> so now let's go back to the blueprint. Let's, it is supposed to be Z or X or Y. <laughs> We're one of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's roll pitching y'all is like a different way that they terminology. Uh, so now let's go play and then let's go over here. Yep. There it goes. Door does it. <laughs> right. Also, my guy can't get through. <laughs> okay. So I have to go to my original door frame, which is right here. I have to set the collisions on this to be, um, that's not that, use complex as simple, save it. Now he'll be able to get through the door. And now let's go back to our blueprint for the door. Let's go back to our timeline and let's set this to negative 90. Compile, save, close, play. Now we got through the door, right? So now we just need to get the door to close. <laughs> It'll automatically go the same way. Doors only open one way, unless they're like waiter doors, <laughs> right? But yes, you can, right? Because all that's driving this is oops, this thing. So let's pretend this is a kitchen door, because that would be more of that kind of door. It swings either way, right? So as you come this way, you would have one cube that says, as he comes this way, the door is going to do this. 
Yep. And as he goes the other way, the door would go the other way. So it would get a little bit trickier with that kind of stuff, but you could definitely do it. Um, all right, so now we need to close the door. So just like this one here says on begin overlap, do this. So I'm gonna go and uh, right click on that sphere and say add event on end overlap. You'll notice that begin is no longer in here because we've already used it, so it's already there. So end overlap, what do I want to happen? Well, I want basically this whole thing to play, but just play backwards, right? So instead of me having to go through and like drag all the stuff down, I could just drag this to reverse and then it'll reverse it, okay? So then I compile it, I save it, I close it, we test it. There's a lot of testing involved because usually stuff just doesn't work correctly. Cool, then he gets out of there and it closes. And then when he wants to go back in, and then it goes back out. Awesome, right? <laughs> We're not made of money here. Now let's test it out uh, a different way. So I'm gonna take this, oops, and I'm gonna rotate it uh, 90 degrees in my scene. And then I'll also duplicate this. Where's my move tool? And then I'll rotate it another 90 degrees this way. Okay, so now we'll go to this door. Sometimes you have to get out of the door and then come back into it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Let's check this one. Oh, did the same thing. Right? So the both of the doors are kind of freaking out because as they rotated, that's just what happens. So I'm going to go back to the door and I'm going to look at why that's doing it. Okay? And this is why. So right now it's saying set world rotation. So right now as I rotate it at 90 degrees, zero is now this way. It's not where it used to be. So instead of setting the world rotation, I can just delete that. And I'll say set um, local relative location or rotation. So set actor, or set relative rotation. Let's type in rotation, there we go. <laughs> there it is. Uh, set relative uh, rotation for the door, okay? It makes another one of these, I can just delete it. And then all I have to do is just connect. This is gonna be my update, and this is my target. Done, compile, save, close. Play. There we go. Now I had to back up just because I was already in the bubble, so I didn't recognize that I was you know, in the bubble. Over here. There we go. Thank you. And then go out. Cool. Now we could have anything happen at that point. Um, let's go back into this. Anything we want to happen in this chain, we can just drag it and put it inside that chain. So let's say that I wanted the door to open and I wanted a light to go on. So I'm gonna go to light. I have to spell it right, there we go. Light a point light. And then in the viewport, I'm gonna tell um, this where I want it to be. So I'm just gonna put it on this side of the door. Go back to this. And I'm gonna say set visibility for the light. And then that will be checked on. Okay, so right now I'm just gonna go to the visibility and turn it off. Somewhere inside here, visible, there we go. Okay, so what should happen now is when I hit play, and I don't have to redrop it in everything because it's on that blueprint, everything just updates. Right. So we can see right here the door, this door has the light already on it, okay? The other door doesn't because I haven't gotten over there yet, but when I enter that bubble, you can see the light went on, okay? You can do that for a whole bunch of things. So that's one area. Um, I could also add a sound. So I could actually play a sound when they walk through the door, which is kind of a neat thing to do. Um, you can keep that chain going forever. I could do this ambient sound here. And this is just like something you drag in. And somewhere inside here, allow spatial attenuation, is that it? Uh, 
Oh, I didn't add any of the sounds in there. All right, well, I didn't add any of the sounds, but I could drop a sound effect in here, import it just like we've done other stuff. Uh, and then I could play a sound. And basically, as the character gets closer to it, the sound would pick up volume. And as they get further away, it would uh, decrease. OK, so there's a lot of stuff that's even just built in right here um, that you could utilize, too, if you needed to just add some more stuff. If I had a lamp, I could create that. If I created a living room and I wanted a lamp in there, I could just drop a light inside of a blueprint with the lamp, and now those two things would be together. And as the person gets closer to the lamp, the light clicks on. As they move away, the light goes away. Okay. Um, cinematic stuff, visual effects, geometry. Here's the staircase. Fancy. And then there's some other stuff there. Okay. Oh, there it is. Audio volume. Yeah, so this is the audio volume so that as you get in that zone, it'll actually play the audio, and then when you get out of the zone, the audio just turns off. That way you don't have a million sound effects kind of going in the background. No. <laughs> we could make a game, though. I know it is. All right, uh, another thing I wanted to show here is just how we can make, like, moldings inside of our rooms. Um, I'm going to go to Curves Tools, I'm going to go to CV, and I'm going to go to one of my side views and turn my grid off. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 And I could, um, if I had that top piece as part of that door structure, that door frame, I could bring that along with me to all the other ones. The texture wouldn't flow, right? It would be a different texture. But I could. Um, so I'm going to make a, um, if obviously this is a huge area. We don't have moldings in here, but let's pretend that we had moldings. I'd basically draw the profile for what that molding would look like. Go to Control Vertex, maybe adjust some of these points so these are a little bit crisper. Pretend that that is it. Okay, so once I have this, then I can just put the pivot in this bottom corner. There it is. So this is like where the top and that line intersect. And then I can just drag it into the rooms. So I'm just going to hold C to drag it in the room. Way too big, so let's shrink it down. And then I'm just going to rotate it. So this will be 45 degrees here. Um, I would duplicate it, bring it over to this area. Yep, and that's still going to be too big because now it's like bigger than that area that I would even have. Let's still shrink that down some more. Because I don't want it sticking through the wall here. It should just butt right against that ledge. It does. Okay. And I'm going to rotate it 45 the other way. I'm going to go grab it again, duplicate it, slide it to that wall, rotate. What am I doing out there? Get in here. So I'm going to say that that's good there. I would obviously have a door here, so there'd be a molding or something. So we'll just pretend that that's good. All right, so now I'm going to grab all four of these. So 68, 67, 65, and then 66, in the order that they would be drawn in. So this one, this one, this one, then that one. Then under surfaces, I can go to uh, loft, set this to linear, set this to polygons, quads, general, per span one, per span one. And then I hit loft, and now I'll have a molding that runs along the wall uh, or the baseboard. Okay, so this is just if you had um, wanted to add that kind of detail to it, you could add that kind of detail to it. That would be the same thing for like uh, chair board, which is the board that goes along the walls. Or if you had crown molding, the same kind of thing there. In some cases, you can get away with just doing a texture, just adding that in the bottom of your texture for each wall if you, if you wanted to do something like that. Um, these tools that are up here are excellent for doing those kinds of things. Even if you had 
some shapes. Let's say um, I'm going to go back to my curve tool. I'm going to turn my grid on so I can actually see where my grid is. All right, I can't see my grid because I'm in the front view. Let's go to the right view and make sure this is on. It's on there. It's on there. Why can't I see my grid? All right, my grid just doesn't want to show up, so I guess I'll just live without it. Oops, that's why. Too far away. Um, let's go here. All right, it's not showing up in the front view or the side view. I'm not sure why, but um, all right. So I'm just going to draw a shape. So if this is a lamp, let's say like one of these, um, I can draw the outline of the lamp. And I'm holding down shift to go straight with it. And then as I get to the bottom here, I'm uh, bringing these points close together anytime I have to make a sudden change. If I go too far, You'll see how the curve's going to try to round off. So if I go here and I just add a couple this way and a couple that way, I get a nice straight line and then it curves. Okay, so there's that curve. I'm going to put the pivot here and then scoot it over a little bit. And then I'm going to go to revolve. Change this to the Z direction. I think that would be it. Set this to cubic polygons. Per span one, per span one. There we go. So this is like the, I forget what it's called in cinema. It's not revolve, it's something else. Lathe, that's what it is. Um, so there's my lamp, right? Very few divisions on it. Um, I could add more if I needed to, but I think that's the gist of what that lamp would look like. Um, it basically takes this shape here, this curve, and it just rotates it around that direction and creates that shape. So if you have something that is that kind of shape, that's an easy way to go. Mm -hmm. You don't need to close off the bottom because it would be just on the ground, right? For the top, um, you could just extrude from here. Oops, I duplicated. And I could extrude again. And then I could extrude again. Or I could have just drawn my shape like that. And then when I get to the very end of it, I can just say merge to center. And then I'll merge that so it's all one shape. Okay. Now again, if you don't see the top of it, it doesn't matter. Um, and then this is something that we could bring into substance. We could paint textures on it and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, or we could just give it basically just like one solid material here and one solid material up there. Put a light inside it and then we would have in our scene, we would have a light. Uh, if you're tweaking any of the lights inside here, you'll notice that you basically get this default world that exists. Once you start putting a ceiling on your stuff, you start putting your ground on it, it might get a bit darker, so you may need to add another light inside your scene. Um, you could also come over here where it says lighting, and you'll see where all the lights are, and it's just a matter of just playing around with it. So if I set that to 1, oops, you'll see it got a bit darker inside my scene. There's 2.5, there's 5, there's 10, right? So I can make my scene brighter or darker based off of this as a whole. If I go to my skylight, uh, this has an intensity here for the sky's light that it's offering. Okay, so that's another area. Um, typically, if you're building an interior scene, you may just want to start from scratch. Typically, I'll just wipe out all of these, just like delete the whole mess. I'm actually going to do that now, though. <laughs> um, delete that whole mess, and then I can kind of start off from square one and build up my lights that way. Okay. Um, these other ones that are in here, loft, planar, um, by rail, extrude, typically I wouldn't need any of those other ones uh, for this kind of thing. We'll get more into these when we do the mechanical one, because when we do wires or cables, I use the extrude for that. Um, the loft one, I typically will use just like I showed for those um, curves inside there. That way, I basically pick the order I want them to loft in, and it just connects them all. 
okay? Planer doesn't have a whole lot of uses in this case. Revolve I'll use for this kind of stuff sometimes. Um, by rail is something I haven't used that in years. Then extrude I'll use. Okay, even though these are under surfaces, make them we still make them into polygon surfaces so we can bring them into Unreal. Uh, the nice thing about doing this method, any of these, is that the UVs for them are automatically laid out. They may not be pretty because I just extruded and whatever else on this. Uh, let me delete this before. Let me just do this again and revolve. There you go. All I have to do is take this and then just unfold it. And it's pretty much laid out. I may have to just kind of cut off just a couple pieces here. And now I have those, and then I could lay it out. There we go. So now that's laid out. There's nothing else I really need to do. Same thing with those moldings. If I just grabbed those moldings and just did a unfold, it would unfold it because they're already kind of set up like that. Okay. I could have also built this off of a uh, polygon cylinder, but either way works. Okay. It's just a matter of which method you like. All right. So you don't need to do the door. You don't need to do the lights, that kind of stuff. It's just extra, extra things you could add to yours. Uh, again, it's just fun stuff. I think it's fun. Um, cool. So the rest of class will be just working on this. Um, next week, we'll start the arm stuff so you can see how to do that. These ones are... That's a chickster. I'm not ready for that. So these ones will be due on the 22nd. I'll show... Um, Monday, we're not going to start the arm. We'll start the arm on Wednesday. Uh, but I'll show on the, tw the Wednesday of next week how to also take snapshots of this. Okay? So we have next week to work on this, and then 22nd is when it's due. Questions? Questions?